Walker, Washington's premier furniture mall. Good morning, America. New overnight political firestorm. President-elect Donald Trump setting it off with a tweet, taking aim at Congressman John Lewis for not viewing him as a legitimate president. Now, the outpouring of support for the civil rights icon. John Lewis is our hero, and he civilized everything we stand for as Americans. And the growing list of political leaders boycotting the inauguration. Ice storm warning more than 20 million Americans in the bullseye. Roads turned into sheets of ice, impossible to stop for some drivers. The deadly accidents, salt trucks out in force. Team coverage this morning of the dangerous storm hitting the heartland. Reunited, the emotional moment a teen allegedly snatched from the hospital as a newborn meets the parents she never knew she had. The first meeting was beautiful, it was wonderful. We couldn't wait no better. The woman who raised her was now facing charges of kidnapping. And end of an era, the greatest show on earth shutting down. Ringling Brothers has been entertaining generation after generation for nearly 150 years. 30 tons. Why the dazzling spectacles are passing into history. Live from ABC News in New York, this is Good Morning America. And good Sunday morning, everyone. On behalf of all of us here, we want to thank you for joining us. You know, just five days before the inauguration and one day before MLK Day, President-elect Donald J. Trump is doubling down on his war of words with the civil rights icon, Congressman John Lewis. Trump taking to Twitter, calling Lewis all talk, talk, talk and no action, and also attacking the congressman's district in Atlanta as crime infested. Now, this all started because Lewis said Trump's presidency was not legitimate and would boycott the inauguration. Here's the aftermath of all of this. Critics tweeting out pictures of Lewis's mugshot from just one of his many arrests during his time in the civil rights movement, pointing out that he has, in fact, been a man of action during his long career. Trump, per usual, not backing down here, but will he go forward with his planned visit to the National African American Museum in honor of Martin Luther King Day? We've got team coverage this morning. George is standing by with analysis, but we're going to start here with ABC's David Wright. David, good morning. Good morning, Dan and Paula. Lewis is one of 18 members of Congress who will not be attending the inaugural. And his decision not to attend, getting lots of attention. Here we are, the eve of Martin Luther King Day, and this icon of the civil rights movement says he doesn't view Donald Trump's presidency as legitimate. Well, Trump blasted back, calling Lewis, all talk, no action. Others have called John Lewis the conscience of the Congress, a living link to Dr. King's dream. Lewis still bears the scars from a brutal beating he received crossing the Edmund Pettus Bridge in the March on Selma, 1965. Bloody Sunday. He's been a fighter for civil rights ever since. And yet, when Lewis told an interviewer he's boycotting the inauguration for the first time in three decades. I don't see this president-elect as a legitimate president. Donald Trump went ballistic, lambasting Lewis as all talk, 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 no action or results, and suggesting Lewis should finally focus on the burning and crime-infested inner cities of the U.S. Democrats spoke up. John Lewis is our hero, and he symbolized everything we stand for as Americans. New Jersey Senator Cory Booker praised Lewis for facing down some of history's most hateful, now and then. John Lewis is a great moral, civil, and human rights leader. Lewis has earned admiration on both sides of the aisle. The vice president-elect attended the 45th anniversary of the March on Selma. Mike Pence calling him a legendary civil rights leader. Koki Roberts counts herself an admirer and a friend. Donald Trump needs to spend time reaching out to the Americans who did not support him. And an argument with John Lewis is not the way to reach out. Tomorrow, as a kickoff for Inauguration Week, Donald Trump was scheduled to tour the new Smithsonian Museum of African American Heritage, where several of the exhibits feature Lewis prominently. You know, the very existence of that museum is a testament to the idea that John Lewis is not just all talk. He fought hard for it to be built 
as a separate part of the Smithsonian. And Trump is also wrong in suggesting in his tweets that Lewis's home district is crime infested, full of urban decay. Georgia's fifth district is also home to, it's the headquarters for Coca-Cola and Delta, plus it's got one of the busiest airports in America. And Emory University as well. Yeah. Thanks, David. David, thank you. At the heart of this dispute uh, between Trump and Lewis is, of course, the issue of Russia. The reason the congressman says he can't support the new president is that he believes Russia helped get Trump elected. And with Congress now poised to investigate possible or alleged contacts between the campaign and the Kremlin, ABC's Alex Marquardt has just arrived in Moscow. Alex, good morning to you. Good morning, Dan. The Russians are watching this change in administrations very carefully and are making it clear they want a new relationship with the U.S. The latest move from the Russian side is to invite the U.S. to talks this month on Syria, talks that the Obama administration had been frozen out of. That invitation extended by Russia's ambassador to Trump's incoming National Security Advisor General Michael Flynn. On the same day that the Obama administration kicked out 35 Russian diplomats for the alleged cyber attacks and meddling in the election. Now, a major goal for the Kremlin is to get the sanctions lifted that the Obama administration has imposed. In a recent interview, Trump said those sanctions would remain in place for a period of time, but could be lifted if the two countries work together well on terrorism and other issues. Russia has, of course, denied that they spied on Trump during past visits here. One official here calling it a complete break from reality. The big question now, when will Putin and Trump have their first meeting? Reports of that could happen during Trump's first foreign trip in Iceland have been shot down, but both sides have shown a willingness to get together once Trump becomes president. Dan, Paula. All right, Alex, we want to thank you for that report this morning. We want to bring in ABC News chief anchor George Stephanopoulos, who will be hosting this week later this morning. And, George, we're going to talk about Russia in just a second, but let's go back to Congressman Lewis. And Trump's apologists and defenders are basically saying that Lewis started this because he questioned Trump's legitimacy. Is that fair? Well, it's true. I mean, and a lot of Democrats are saying, is it really smart to question legitimacy, to do what Republicans have done in the past, like Donald Trump, when he questioned mm -hmm. legitimacy of Barack Obama? The other question, though, is, was it proportionate, factual, and wise, Trump's response? And on those three grounds, I think it falls short. He wasn't right about the district. He wasn't right about John Lewis's history. And as Koki pointed out in the earlier piece, this is a point in time now where Donald Trump needs to be reaching out those sure. who opposed him. But it, during the campaign, this is a guy who tangled with a Gold Star family, with the war hero John McCain, uh, with a prominent judge of Mexican uh, extraction. So, so. And he won. And he won, nonetheless. So is there any reason to think that this one will be any different? Well, the question is, what does he want to do as president? And will he have the power to do that? Look at the polling for Donald Trump coming in to this inauguration just five days away. He's got a, basically a 44% approval rating. That's 40 points below where Barack Obama was eight years ago. It's even below, almost 20 points below, where George W. Bush was coming out of a contested election. So, and a, a president who's unpopular isn't powerless by any means, but he's going to need more support than he has right now to get his agenda through. He does have both houses of Congress. Mm -hmm. um, I want to go back to Russia now, because we can't forget that, you know, John Lewis's argument for all of this, that questioning the legitimacy of Trump's presidency was because of Russia's interference in the election. But w uh, diplomatically, what does America have to gain by improving those relations with Russia? Well, you want better relations. The question is, on what terms? And, you know, you had Donald Trump telling the Wall Street Journal this week that he would think about lifting sanctions uh, in the future, depending on what Russia did. This is very much at odds with what his own nominees were saying on Capitol Hill this week. You had General Mattis, who's his nominee for defense secretary, saying Russia is the number one strategic threat. He wants a strategy to confront Russia. You had Rex Tillerson for secretary That's of right. state saying he wants, this is not the time to talk about lifting sanctions. Mike Pompeo, nominee for CIA, says, says Russia is the number one threat and is doing nothing to help us with ISIS. So there's a pretty big gulf there between what Donald Trump is saying and what his nominees are saying. And yet he encourages that, that you know, respectful dissent. Yeah, but something pretty remarkable this week, we also learned in the hearings, Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of State nominee, says he has not discussed Russia with Donald Trump. Interesting, very interesting. George, we're going to let you go because we know you have a huge show coming up this morning. Sure. He's going to talk with incoming White House Chief of Staff, Franks Priebus, and Senator Bernie Sanders. It's all coming up later this morning on This Week. And George, we'll be heading up our team for live all-day coverage of the inauguration this Friday, January 20th. Our coverage begins at 7 a.m. Eastern. Dan? Thanks again to George. We move on now to the end of an era for many of us, including many of us right here on this desk, a trip to the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus was a staple of childhood, but overnight we learned that the greatest show on earth is coming to an end. And ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is here with more. Marcy, good morning.
Hi, Dan. Good morning. This circus has been around since the 1800s, trying through the years to stay modern, incorporating technology, focusing on more breathtaking stunts. But in the end, it wasn't enough. Ring, ring, brothers and boys. After 146 years of flashy costumes, breathtaking acrobatics, and exotic animals, Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus says it's taking down its so-called big top for good. We will be closing both units of Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus in May of this year. Overnight, Feld Entertainment, the circus's owner, breaking the news to its staff. It's been through world wars. It's been through every kind of economic cycle. and. It's been through a lot of change. It's Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. For generations of kids and families, the circus's march into town was a call to fun and wonder. But for animal activists, the dazzling giant stars of the show and here come the elephants were a call to arms. They don't have the best interests of the elephants at heart. In 2016, Ringling Brothers announced all of its performing elephants would be retired to an animal sanctuary in Florida. Kellyanne. In May, we were there as the elephants performed for the last time. Removing the elephants from the touring units, we saw a very sharp drop in attendance. And in recent years, the fate of humans in the circus has been under scrutiny too. In 2014, Ringling was sued after this stunt went terribly wrong. Eight aerial performers hanging from their hair collapsed to the ground, leaving them hospitalized for months. And in 2016, audiences were stunned after a BMX routine ended with one daredevil rider motionless. The company said at the time the performer received immediate medical attention and was taken to a local hospital for further evaluation. And there are still 30 more performances scheduled until the final bow set for May 21st in Long Island, New York. And circus managers say rising costs and declining ticket sales, especially after the elephants were removed from the show, all played into this decision. Hard to see still because it's such an institution. It is, but a lot of people also celebrating the decision. So some some mixed feelings on that across Definitely. the country. Speaking of mixed feelings, just moments ago I spoke with Nick Walenda, circus performer and daredevil, whose family first started with Ringling Brothers back in 1928, and who was a part of the circus for two years, starting in 2007. All right, Nick, we want to thank you so much for joining us this morning. And you know, given your family's history, I can only imagine this was tough to hear. How are you taking this news? You know, it's quite heartbreaking. Last night when I found out that they were going to close down a 147-year-old American icon, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's upsetting, to say the least. My family came over here, and I am here because, my, because of Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus. 1928, my family came over for John Ringling over from Cuba, and uh, it's, it is. It's heartbreaking, for sure. Right, and we know that the elephants were removed from the show in 2016. That impact really felt immediately, but there was criticism that the circus didn't really keep up with the times. Was there anything that they could have done to salvage the situation and avoid closing? You know, it's hard to answer that question. I, I do believe that it is all about keeping up with the times. And in fact, my mom wrote a book when I was much younger saying that she felt like the circus was dying and going away. And, and uh, you could see it receding for sure in attendance. Right, you know, at, at the end of the day, we're talking about 146 years, the greatest show on earth. Nick, how do you want people to remember the circus? You know, that's, that's a heartbreaking question. Um, I, the circus will go on. There's no question, in my opinion. It's, it's been an industry that has been through uh, everything from, you know, the thick and thin. So ups and downs, and it will go on. Maybe not in the form of Ringling Brothers, but I can guarantee you that I'm more than willing to take the mantle and continue on that legacy that my family started back in the 1780s. All right, Nick, we want to thank you for sharing your family's history, and we'll be looking for you in your next feat, whatever that may be. Thanks for joining us this morning. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah, definitely emotional, he said. He's here because of the circus. His wife's family is here because of the circus. And by the way, his next project, he's working on walking over an active volcano. So, oh, So Nick's sick. not going away. He it sounds like one of his next projects may be reviving the circus as yeah, well. Exactly. We're going to move now, though, to the winter weather alerts in 10 states right now. More than 20 million Americans in the path of a major storm down power lines and trees and icy roads, creating perilous conditions. There have been six weather-related deaths since Friday. ABC's Adrian Bankert is in Wichita, Kansas. Adrian, good morning to you. 
Good morning, Dan. You can actually see the freezing rain coming down here. Look at these bushes. There's a coating of ice over everything, trees and streets. It's a major concern, and as you mentioned, in some cases, a deadly combination. This morning, more than 20 million Americans are in the path of a major ice storm, causing dangerous travel through the heartland. In Kansas City, this car hits black ice before spinning out of control right through a red light, sliding at least 100 feet down the road. In Oklahoma, roadway conditions turning deadly. One person killed in a massive wreck on I-40. Both lanes on the interstate shut down through the night. With ice, uh, it can change very quickly. The heavy ice knocking down thousands of trees, branches cracking under the weight of the ice, littering the streets, damaging homes and cars overnight, darkness blanketing neighborhoods. One more up. Oh, power just went up. Salt trucks out in heavy force this morning, hoping to make travel much less treacherous. Ice can be a challenge for people, you know. It's always great to plan ahead and give yourself plenty of time to get where you're going. And if this coating of ice is any indication, just that much ice could really make it dangerous, not only for power lines being brought down, but also those roadway conditions. Some major events planned for today affected by this storm, including the Steelers Kansas City Chiefs game. That game has been delayed till later tonight because of the icy conditions. Also, there was a Red Hot Chili Peppers concert scheduled here in Wichita for tonight. That's been postponed until tomorrow. So they're taking every precaution, though the good news is this system is moving out. Temperatures are warming up later today and into tomorrow. Dan and Paula, back to you. It's hard to overlook the irony of the red hot chili peppers uh, being in the middle of an ice, ice storm. storm. <laughs> Adrian, thank you. Uh, let's get the, more on the weather now with Rob Marciano, who's back in studio finally. He's been avoiding us for a couple weeks. Uh, what's happening, man? Hey, guys. Yeah, the red hot chili peppers no doubt will help that thaw. Uh, this is day three of our three day event, thankfully. So we'll turn a corner around noontime today. But until then, it is still bad out there, especially uh, across the western areas. And we have an ice storm warning that's been extended north into Nebraska and parts of Iowa as well. Here's the freezing line. That is key. It's right over Wichita. Obviously, the further below freezing you are, the thicker the ice is going to be when you get this moisture rolling up into it. Not a, there are pockets of dry air in here, so that's the good news. There's Kansas City will warm up, so I think by game time tonight, 8 p.m., it should be all rain, but a cold, nasty rain. And then watch it go into uh, parts of Chicago. I think it probably will start as freezing rain and sleet uh, tomorrow morning before it turns over to, to uh, rain in Chicago there. But also notice the snow back here. So once we get this accumulating ice, western parts of Kansas, so Oklahoma, and Nebraska, we're also going to see uh, one to three inches of snow on top of that. So that's going to be the worst areas. Omaha back through Lincoln and uh, down through Woodward, Oklahoma. Severe weather watch also across parts of southern Texas as this storm, the mother storm, kicks out into the plains. Could see isolated tornadoes today. That's a quick check on the weather headlines. Here now is your local forecast. Well, it's a much drier day today. A little bit of a break in the action. Mostly sunny skies for the afternoon hours in the D.C. area. Temperatures a few degrees above average for this afternoon as well. By tonight, we will fall cooler. Upper 20s to 30s across the area. Maybe a spotty shower and some sleet mixing in late after 2 a.m. As we head into Monday morning, mostly cloudy skies stick with us for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So if you're heading out, also want to take the umbrella, maybe a spotty shower. All right. Hi, Ron. Good to see you again. Hey, the peripatetic yeah. Rob Marciano. You guys have been back. reunited. And then he throws, he throws these fancy, <laughs> I don't know what that word means. But peripatetic? I, you know. Peripatetic Rob Marciano. Okay, Man, anything. He moves a lot. Google that. Oh, mm -hmm. Ron was enjoying uh, all his extra uh -huh. elbow room. Yeah, you're, you're crowding my space I'm here, bro. I'm peripatetic over here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you are. A lot of things, a lot of other things besides the explainer of peripatetic coming up in news. What do you have? Uh, well, good morning to all of you. Good, good morning, morning, everyone. We begin in Poland with the welcoming of as many as uh, 4,000 U.S. troops as part of a NATO buildup in that region. This marks one of the largest deployments of U.S. forces in Europe since the Cold War. Russia has criticized the move, calling it a threat to Russian security. And in Belgium, three people are in custody after a series of anti-terror raids in the Brussels uh, neighborhood of Molenbeek. That's the same area where some of the Paris and Brussels attackers from a while back had lived. Police said no weapons or explosives were found. The suspects are being questioned about possible terrorist ties. And back in the U.S., a mosque in Seattle went up in flames, destroyed by the massive fire there. Uh, police have arrested a 37-year-old man who they say may have intentionally set that blaze. No one inside the building at the time. The firefighters are re re working still to recover holy books, anything else they can salvage from that Islamic center. And after a disastrous uh, failed launch last September, the SpaceX program 
is back on track this morning. Three, two, one. Very cool uh, liftoff there uh, from the launch pad uh, at Vandenberg Air Force Base in Southern California.